after this has been on my mind a little while. Uh, we Sister Brenda is sick. Her son has just just been urgently desperate sick. Jerry, my Micah has been sick, and uh, Micah called us out night, and he, he was scared. His little body was shaking. So I came up just real seriously for prayer this morning. And after I prayed for your needs, I felt the Lord visited me in a simple way. And I, I have a word for our church. I hope we get to broadcast this, but this is a word for our church. I hope this will encourage you as it's encouraged me. It's stirred me to want to get closer to the Lord. Around about, I've tried to study some history and find out, around about nine, really started in the 1800s. By 1918, a spirit had come to America. Now, when God judges a nation, he don't judge it by Hollywood. And he don't judge it by what's going on in Nashville in the music industry. Anytime God judges a nation, he judges it by the ministry. Anytime God, God deals with a nation, he'll deal it by the prophets, the leadership, the ministry. In 19 and 18, there was a spirit came into America. The churches started preaching. World War I had, had, had started and preachers were preaching that men, and it started in our pulpits, that men that would go and die and give their lives and go to the front lines that carried on over into World War II. I don't, I've not heard this preach just too much war, but it's, it's become a doctrine now. But men that would go and would die and would fight because they would sacrifice for your freedom. And because they would sacrifice so that you could have your freedom, that this good and merciful God would in no way, shape, form, nor fashion let them go to hell. And this thing started being preached real hard in, in churches in America in the middle of World War I. They, preachers got into it to comfort families. Little boys got drafted that were drunks. Daddies got drafted that was drunks. Little old wholeness mamas and daddies. Children leaving here and husbands leaving here and daddies and grandpas leaving here. And preachers got into it. But when they got into it, they got in error. And it opened up universalism that nobody will ultimately be lost. And it brought a damnable doctrine to the church. Now, there's, there's some doctrines that's, that's not real Anything that's not biblical, but there's some that people fuss over that's no big deal. But there's some things that's damnable. If any man try to come up any other way, he's the same as a thief and a robber. And anything that tells you you can get to heaven any door except Jesus, it's a damnable doctrine. I need to preach this today. I need to use some real strong words and Preach this today. Anything, anything that tells you you don't have to be born again, not to burn in hell, it's urgently wrong. It, it's, 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 it's real wrong. Anything that tells you in the end, I, ha I have a friend down in South Georgia that's got into this stuff. He and I used, he used to travel with me and help me with my tent son. And he's got into this stuff that nobody's going to ultimately be lost. We need to tell folk that everybody that don't call on the name of Jesus is going to be lost. Everybody that don't come through the door. There's not three doors. There's not five doors. There's not 20 doors. Ollie's not a door. Buddha's not a door. If I give my body to be burned, sacrifice is not a door. Religion is not a door. There's one door. I wish somebody would tell me the name of that door. There's one door, and his name is Jesus. There's, there's only one door for which man might be entered into the kingdom, of which man might be born again. We need to tell each other, remind each other, there's only one way to be born again. Only one way to be born again. Well, up, up till this time right here, up to this point right here, even on up till World War II. And I don't know how to preach some of this, but I have a word. Everything America touched, God blessed it. Every move America made, God blessed it. 
Some of these other nations are 2,000 years old, three or 4,000 years old. The, the, the continent or the nation of America, 1776, one of the younger nations. And yet in our, in our knowledge, in our investments, in our ability to touch the world, in our ability to, 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 to of all the, uh, the, the rocket knowledge, all the nuclear knowledge, all the scientist knowledge, all the medical knowledge, all the electronic knowledge, we're up there with countries that have been around here for thousands of years in 300 short years, 200-something short years. I wish somebody could hear what. Everything we touch, God blessed it. Because, because up till around, up till around World War II, it was, it was like 80%, 70 or 80% of America loved God. 70 or 80% of America believed in God we trust. People stood, people stood. They, they feared God. They reverenced God. The Sabbath day Sunday, or, or the, it was set aside. And, and even, I, I remember, I remember Trinity's town. They got the baby here tonight. But I remember, I was preaching, I was preaching in, in, in that area up there, Hamilton, in that area up there. And they, 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 when they started letting shops be open on Sunday, they didn't even allow, in the, in the early, in the 80s, they didn't even let their shops be open on Sunday. I mean, a huge town that had malls and shopping centers. There's areas up there, they made them shut down on Sunday. And I, and I, I remember when it came out news, I was up there preaching, and, 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 and the church was tore up that day. They said, they said man, God, God ain't going to like this. They're, they're past a little law day. They're going to let them open the stores up. But there was a time we reverenced the day of God. There's a time we reverenced the house of God. There's a time we reverenced ministers of God. There's a time we reverenced our Bible. There's a time that the, by the Word of God held high place in our life. And every move we made, God blessed us like He did Israel. No nation could stand against us. No enemy could stand against us. Every time they touched us, they touched the apple of God's eye, and God fought for us. And, and I know the Korean, my daddy served in that. He never had to, was shipped overseas, but he, he served in that, the Korean conflict. That was actually the first real involvement in war that we didn't win. That was, that was actually the first. We go into Vietnam, the same thing happens. And it's happened every time since then. I don't know how to preach about war. I'm just preaching tonight. Up till this time, it tells me that somehow God had eased back from America a little bit. Some, something had changed. Well, what happened? I, I, I believe that, that, that men's hearts start turning away from God. That, that people's hearts. So, so I want to preach a message tonight. God is looking for a man. And the Lord God called on Adam and he said, where art thou? Now, Ezekiel 22, 28, God dealt with me just, just after prayer this morning. And her prophets have dubbed them with untempered mortar, seeking vanities and devising lies unto them. Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken. The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy, and they have opposed the stranger wrongfully. He said, the prophets have, sp have they said, thus saith the Lord, and the Lord hath hath not spoken. Hallelujah. We have a TV ministry. We, in fact, we have a large TV ministry. It goes into 40 nations twice on Sunday. It's played about 75 times a week and almost ever, ever stayed in them. We've got it in California now. It's all over Texas. But the majority of your television preachers, they're telling lies. They're standing there. God spoke to me. If you'll send in $1,000, he'll give you 10000 I doubt if God told them that. God spoke to me. If you'll, if you'll, if you'll sacrifice and write this ministry at 20 thousand dollar check he'll make you a millionaire i don't believe god's really excited about making ten thousand people a millionaire hallelujah one little old preacher i heard him he said god spoke and he said he said if and he told how many people if you'd send in a thousand dollars that before the day's over there'd be a millionaire raised up and i counted up and if everybody he said send in a thousand dollars that guy would have been a millionaire before the day was over hallelujah wouldn't know them little people out there is that old stinking preacher but the bible said there's going to come preachers that they would prophesy and they would tell lies and they'd say God said when God's not said and God says when this happens I'm going to get upset. God says when this starts happening and a nation allows it. This is what I want to preach now we can, we, can, we, can, we can really rake those sorry preachers over the coals but it ain't just the sorry preachers it's the sorry people that support them. 
Can I preach today? Hallelujah. If, if, if I, I, I like Lay's potato chips. I, I like the old salty ones. I, I can sit down. I can't eat just one. I can eat a bag. But if there's a tater chip company out there that makes soggy potato chips, and if everybody quits buying them, they would go out of business. Hallelujah. If America would return to reading their Bible and we'd quit supporting what's not real, they'd have to shut down because TV time's not cheap and keeping churches open's not cheap and, and, and light bills are not cheap. But the only reason these preachers are able to keep going is there's cause there's some people they don't want to hear the word of God. They don't want to hear you got to live right. They don't want to hear that he's a God of judgment. They don't want to hear that he's a God of wrath. They don't want to hear as he, as he rejoiced over you to bless you. He'll rejoice over you to destroy you. That's the Bible. That's the Bible. They don't want to hear. They don't want to hear. They don't want to hear that the same God that heals the sick is the same God that kills. Hallelujah. Hey, don't nobody want you to preach that God's a killer. But I'm telling you, this God I serve, he's not only a dead raiser, he's a killer. He's not only, he'll not only raise up and bless. Hallelujah. It was God that told him to toss Jezebel down. It was God that opened up the earth and swallowed up Corey. It was God, it was God that took that miracle out of the fiery furnace and let those others be consumed. It was God that unlocked the mouth of the lions when Daniel got out and the next crew threw in, got consumed by the lions. God, he's not just merciful and he's not just just and he's not just good. God is a killer. I said God is a killer. You're talking about an assassin. If God ever gets after you, you can't change enough to get away. You can't hide enough to get away. You can't run enough to get away. You can't change your name and your address. If God ever wants you, though I make my bed in hell, God is there. Though I take the wings of a morning and I fly to the uttermost part. God's already there. So God's grieved over this stuff that's happening in America. The people of the land have used oppression. They've ex exercised robbery. God's grieved at these credit card companies charging you 27%. God's grieved at these pay-by-the-week places that's charging you 30 and 40 percent. Can I preach today? God's grieved when people take advantage of the poor. God's grieved at these rent-to-own places. We don't preach much. This needs to be preached about. God's grieved at these rent-to-own places that sell your washing machine $7 a week, and when you get paying for a $400 washing machine, you've paid $1,700 for it. God's grieved at these bunch of thieves and robbers and go to church and pay their tithes and sit on the front row and rob the poor. God's grieved at it. God's grieved at what's going on in America. God's grieved at the abortion doctors. God's grieved grieved at the drug dealers. God's grieved at the homosexuality that's moving in this nation. God's grieved at the political leaders that's taking this nation over, that's throwing away the word of God like it's nothing. God's grieved when they won't let the Ten Commandments remain on our courthouse walls. God's grieved. God's grieved when they won't let our children pray in school. God's grieved when they don't want our children to carry a Bible to school. God is grieved God's grieved when our preachers have sold out for money. God's grieved, hallelujah, when the young people are turning the ways of the world and they're walking away from a standard. God is grieved. God's grieved that a nation has forgot God. God's grieved at the apostasy that's going on. God's grieved at the backsliding that's going on. God's grieved that the junk that slipped into the church. God's grieved that we've let the weenie roast replace the prayer meeting. God's grieved that we've let all the junk slip into our Pentecostal churches. There's a grief going on in heaven. There's a sadness going on in heaven. God's grieved. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. God's looking for a man, John. Jerry, God's looking for a man. That's why some of you are under attack right now. 
devil realized you could be that woman and you could be that man. And he said, I've got to get you because you're the one that's going to get me from destroying America. You're the one that's going to stop me from destroying a thousand souls. I've got to make you backslide. I've got to make you compromise. I've got to make you hard or bitter or hateful. I've got to get you away from the presence of God. But God's looking for a man. God's looking for a woman. God's looking for a young person. God's looking for somebody. God's looking for one more Noah that'll stand in the gap and make up the heads. God's looking for somebody. Not looking for a good preacher. He's not looking for a prophet. Not looking for a great pastor and evangelist or teacher apostle. He's looking for a man that loves him. He's looking for a woman that loves him. He's looking for somebody that says, I want to live right. I want to. Jeremiah 5 and 1. While you turn there, I'll finish Ezekiel. Therefore, have I poured out mine indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own ways have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. Election year. They're looking for a man to run. God's looking for a man. Jeremiah 5 and 1. Run you to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. And see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof if you can find a man. If there be any that executeth judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. Hallelujah. God's looking around, and he's got, a, he's got a vial of judgment in his hand. But he said, if I can just find me a Noah, I'll wait a little while. If I can just find me a righteous man or a woman, I'll hold judgment back from your family. I'll hold judgment back from your community. I'll hold judgment back from your church. I'll hold judgment back from your city. I'll hold judgment back from your nation. He's not looking for a thousand. He's not looking for a hundred. God's looking for a man. God's looking for a nester that'll, that'll rise up for such a time as this. God's looking for a Deborah, hallelujah, that'll stand up and let God be God. And somebody ought to praise him in this house. Hallelujah. It ain't no time to play around. It ain't no time to pull back. I challenge Miracle Deliverance Tabernacle to humble ourselves before God. America needs somebody to weep for. America needs somebody to stand in the gap. America needs somebody that can touch God for this country. Genesis 6 and 5. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And every imagination of the thought of their heart was only evil continually. It sounds like this country. And it repented God that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him in his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy men whom I have created from the face of the earth, both men and beast and the creeping things and the fowl of the air. And before it repented me that I have made them. But Noah, but Noah, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Hallelujah. I could, I could stop right there and preach a while. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Hallelujah. This, this little old fan here, it's got a cord on it. It's got this little old wire. And through this wire, you plug it up, runs 110 volts. And the only thing, when I grab this wire, the only thing that keeps that electricity from consuming me or killing me is that little tiny roll of insulation. Friend, the glory of God will consume a sinful nation. When the glory of God comes and the real church, little churches like this, little little men and women like you that scattered across America and around the world, we ain't the only one, but we're one of them. You're the insulation that's holding the wrath of God back off of this nation. Hallelujah. You're you're all that's keeping God. When God walks through and he sees the abortion clinics and he sees all the abuse and all the sin and all the heathen religion, God just wants to let his glory, just glorious wrath, just consume everything. But there's some Noah standing in the gap and making up the heads. There's some Abraham when he looks down at San Francisco and Atlanta, Georgia, and New York, and he sees all the homosexuality and God's fixing to destroy it. There's some Abrahams that's standing before the Lord and 
the devil don't want you to realize it, but he sent this little, the Lord sent this little preacher to tell you tonight, you are making a difference. Every man and woman in here that's praying, you're making a difference. Every man and woman in here that won't backslide, you're making a difference. Every young person that won't compromise, you're making a difference. You're holding back the flood of iniquity. You're holding back the powers of hell. You're keeping the devil from taking over. And I wish somebody would worship. If it wasn't for praying people like you, hell would take over. If it wasn't for praying people like you, demons would take over. But they can't take over because God got somebody standing in the gap and making up the head. The devil can't do what he wants to do because God's got somebody that's not going to stop and they're not going to quit and they're not going to throw in the towel. And this is why you're under attack right now. Nor found grace. The Lord preserveth all that love him, but all the wicked will be destroyed. Psalms 9 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Romans 1 21. Because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful. They became vain in their imagination, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. They changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also they gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who change the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Hallelujah. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections for even their women did change the natural lust, the natural use of that which is against nature. Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving to themselves that recompense of their evil which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things that were not coming. But God's fixing to turn folk over that won't repent and won't turn around and won't do right. But right in the middle of it all, God's going to have a Noah that's going to hear the voice of God. Right in the middle of it all, there's going to be a revival. Right in the middle of all the mess, there's going to be a move of God. Ezekiel 33 and 11. Say unto them as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn you, turn you from your evil ways. Why will you die, O house of Israel? Deuteronomy 5, 25. Now therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us if we hear the voice of the Lord God any more that we should die. His, his presence is such a consuming fire. For who is there all flesh who hath heard the voice of the living God speak out of the midst of the fire as we have and lived. Ezekiel 13 and 9, and my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanities, that devise lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writings of the house of Israel. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord God, because even because they have seduced my people, saying peace when there was no peace. One built up a wall and another dubbed it with untempered mortar. I want to give you about Five or six reasons why you're needed right now. Number one reason at another time like this, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And he held judgment off approximately 100 years. He, he caused God to tarry, pouring the flood out 100 years. Would anybody lift your little hands and say, God, give me a little longer to get my family in? Would anybody, would anybody, would anybody, would anybody cry that out of this room right now? Oh, God, give us a little longer to get our families in. God, all God needed, hallelujah. He did. He wasn't looking for 10,000 people or 5,000. He found one man, and his name was Noah. But everybody in this building help me preach. Would you turn around and just ask somebody, why couldn't it be you? Why can't you be the one that will get so close to God that you can affect him? Why can't you be the one that will humble yourself and cry? out to God. If you can break mercy down on our little old church and our little old country, why can't you be the one that humble yourself before God? Why can't you be the one if you're being tempted and tested and tried, it's because the devil knows you can be that one and he's trying to hinder you. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. 
saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city. Crown it. Cry against it for the wickedness has come up before me. I love music. God didn't send a singing group. God didn't raise up a band and send a band. Raised up a preacher. He raised up somebody that weep. Somebody would stand in the gap. Somebody would make up their heads. Somebody would get a burden. And it don't take a thousand. It takes one. Why can't it be you? Why can't you make your mind up tonight? I'm going to pray a little longer. I'm going to seek him a little more. I'm going to get my heart tender. Why can't you let the Lord use you? Why can't you be a Jonah? I don't got time to go into all their stories. All these men didn't immediately surrender. But when they yielded back to God, they shook cities. They turned nations around. God used them and they had an effect. But anybody, this is Tennessee, the volunteer state. But anybody stand to your face and say, God, could you use me? Lord, would anybody do it in this building? Lord, would you use me? Just simple little old me. Could I make a difference in a nation? Could I make a difference in a town or a city or a family or a job? Oh, God, could you see something in me? When, when everybody takes you lightly and you're just a Sunday God to them. Oh, God, when you're about to pour out judgment, could I hear you whisper at midnight and could I lay my for you and can I beg you oh God have mercy and God have mercy is there a Moses in the house that cry oh God if you're going to smite their name out write mine out too I never saw this before God was about to cross three and a half million people's names out one man stood there God's angry at three and a half million and pleased at one man and one man caused God to spare three and a half million people mm. hallelujah hallelujah how if one man can spare three and a half million, surely I can stand for my family. Surely I can stand for my church. Surely I can make a difference in my little community. Surely I can make a difference in my little town. Somebody ought to praise him a little bit. If Moses can touch God and keep him from smiting three and a half million people, surely you can stand before God and he'll have mercy on your household. Surely you can stand before God. Devil don't want nobody standing in the gap and making up the hedge. Isaiah 68, and I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I see and, and who will go for us? And this afternoon, I've heard that voice again. This morning in prayer, I heard that voice again. I'm looking for a man. Isaiah's gone. Is there a man? Jeremiah's gone. Is there a man? A.A.L. and Jack Cole's gone. I'm looking for a man. I, I, I get to preach it like this. That was tied up. And the master said, where he said, somebody, go turn that little coat loose. Let that little old mule loose. And if anybody says anything, you tell them, the master has need of him. We get tied up with stuff. There's fences in our life. There's fences of paying bills and old burdens we burn, cares of this life, and, and all the jalabarada behind. And I hear a voice that you let me go. The master has need of me. I, 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 I wouldn't embarrass nobody in this room. You're my family. I mean, I love you. I wouldn't embarrass nobody. But we guard against horrible sins. We guard against ugly sins. But then another sin we don't preach much about, and it's just busyness. We just get so busy, we don't have time to give ourselves to God. But I wish somebody cried, out, let me go. I got to have time to fi find the favor of God. I got to have time to build my altar back. I got to have time to get right with God. God's not looking for a church full. He, he's not looking for a denomination, an organization, or a whole country, or a whole city. God's looking for a man. God, the eyes of God are going to and fro.